ABC 10 at Issue starts now. They're fighting for care. Our nation's veterans forced to wait for medical treatment. Some even dying before they can get an appointment. Today we discuss a plan aimed at fixing the problem. That, plus a service dog who stops a local child's headaches. We'll discuss the canine's uncanny ability and how a breakthrough surgery keeps Bodie on the job. Good morning, I'm Keith Jones for NBC 10 at Issue. We begin with a massive backlog in U.S. veterans' hospitals. The scandal came to a head last year. That's when it was discovered that nearly 100 vets died while waiting to see a doctor at an Arizona VA hospital. An internal audit uncovered more than 120 thousand vets across the country who were either ignored and then workers who were hiding the delays. And the problem isn't getting any better. The number of appointments that take longer than 90 days to complete has doubled and new goals calling for patients to be seen within 30 days aren't being met. At last check, more than 6,000 veterans at the VA hospital in Philadelphia wait 30 days or more to see a doctor. With me now is New Jersey Congressman Donald Norcrest. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Congressman Norcross is the sponsor of a bill, by the way, called the Veterans Freedom of Health Care Act. It'll give veterans the right to choose where they receive their care. The congressman is a member of the Armed Services and House Budget Committees. Before we get to that bill, though, you hear those statistics, just staggering numbers, depressing, frankly. What is your sense of receiving care if you're a veteran here locally? Well, first of all, there's outrage and disbelief how we can treat those who fought for us as second-class citizens. We built the best military in the world with the second-class citizen when it comes to health care when they come home. So you heard the number, 6,000 veterans are waiting over 30 days right here in the Delaware Valley. So myself, along with Congressman Tom MacArthur, put together the bill, uh, which will very simply give the veteran a choice a choice to the best health care system the world has, and that's what we have here in the United States. And you said outrage. Is that what local vets are expressing to you? It's not only local. I just uh, returned home last night from Afghanistan, We're going to talk about where we that. met with just a number of uh, our local uh, veterans who are serving over there, uh, who they want to receive the best military equipment when they're in this field. But when they come home, they want to have predictability and stability. And that comes with the health care systems that works for everybody. How would your bill work? Well, very simply, uh, we give the veteran the choice of what they want to do. The VA system was designed in the 1930s. It has evolved over the years. But one thing that we know for sure now, it's a parallel and unequal system. We have the greatest health care in the world. But our veterans can't get a choice to it. So if a vet from my district comes up from Woodbury, gets an appointment, he passes by in Spira Hospital, Virtual Hospital, Kennedy Hospital, Cooper Hospital, mm -hmm. and a half dozen urgent uh, clinics to go to a system he had to wait 30 days. It's insane. It, it really is. Sense. Yeah. So what we're saying is if you like the veteran system, and they do some great things over there, sure. whether it's the prosthetics or traumatic brain injury, keep going there. But if you want to make sure that you can go around the corner where your spouse is able to go in a couple days or in a day, you should be able to do it. So it is a very simple bill that says we're going to extend the uh, Veterans Choice Act to the entire country. If you opt out of the veteran system, though, will it cost more money? Well, you're not going to opt out. It will be just a different pathway. I see. Right now, we pay 100 percent of the cost when they're in the veteran system. This would be set up similar to Medicare that you can go to any health care provider that provides for health for Medicare, but you're doing it from the veteran's perspective. It's very simple. and It's quite frankly what the average person on the street says. Why can't I get access to the greatest health care system in the world right here at home? Yeah, it, how does your bill differ from the Veterans Choice program? Veterans Choice is a little bit complicated. It's designed, number one, as a pilot program mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. runs out in the year 2017. But it says you have to be over 40 miles away. And it has changed once because it was as a bird flies. But if you're in the southern part of New Jersey, you're 40, within 40 miles. But to get there, you have to travel somewhere sure. close to 60. Unless you're in a rural up. area, and then it's a different travel. And it's a different. But for those veterans who are stuck in the Delaware Valley, who is waiting over 30 days, 6,000 of you, we want to change that system. 
Now, your bill requires the Secretary of Veterans Affairs to report to Congress about veterans, even when they get care outside of the VA. How do you suppose that will work? Well, very simply, because what we don't want to do is disband the entire VA system. There are many veterans that feel close and they want to be able to go to the veterans hospital because it's vets helping vets. So we want to make sure that that's maintained for those who choose to go there. But by the same condition, we want him to report back how the system is working for those who go outside the traditional VA system to the best health care system in the world. So it gives them the choice. But we also say to the secretaries, you report back to us and make sure that we understand it's starting to work. What about support for your bill? Republicans, are they on board with this? There's no question. There's bipartisan support support across the entire legislature, but it's a matter of which members of Congress and which bill. Uh, if it up, was up to Tom MacArthur and myself, I think this bill would pass tomorrow. Okay. The bill would no doubt drive up costs, hypothetically here thinking about that. Where do you think the money would come from? Well, the pot of money is already there. You have a system that's being entirely financed, which is the VA system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are those who don't want to throw any more money at the problem. What I say is cutting money from the, uh, the system is not helping anybody. What we're doing is two parallel paths. There's not additional health care. There's just more choice. Okay. Transitioning away from this now, I am uh, uh, grew up in New Egypt, New Jersey, of course, 15 minutes from Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst. Uh, on Tuesday, the Senate cleared le legislation that protects that base. President Obama, though, vetoed similar legislation. Do you think the president might use that veto again? Uh, there's always that possibility, but Tom McArthur and I put into the bill that piece of legislation that keeps the uh, KC-10s, which is the refueling team there, and I believe the president's going to sign it. Moving to this now, you watch a sporting event every Sunday, of course. We're going to be watching football today. We're watching the Eagles. Uh, no doubt during that game there will be a nod to our military, the men and women who served in the armed forces. Um, it's funded by taxpayers, or at least it had been until the Senate ended that legislation. Um, how did you vote on that? Oh, no question about it. I voted to make sure that no money went to the NFL to pay them to be patriots. In fact, if it was up to me, I think they should pay the money back. Surprised a lot of people when those articles started coming out. Uh, there's no question about it. You know, when we see the flag being pulled out across the stadium, we all feel so good about our country. I think most people are outraged. We have to pay them to be Americans? Sure. No, I think they should give it back.